Peace and love, everyone. It's your girl, Karina, coming at you with a talk on Eros. And I want to make this a live Q&A. So I know that this is an impromptu talk and not really sure who's going to be on. Um, so I will share the information for anyone who's listening or who's watch- listening to the replay. And... Um, you know, you can definitely message me some questions. Uh, you can also message me if you'd like me to look into your chart um, about this topic because this is a topic that isn't that does not have a lot of information on it, and it works really well when it comes to symmetry. Um, so if you have a partnership and you're looking to ignite more of sexual you know, intimacy and attraction. Um, A lot of the times astrologers look at Mars and Venus and they do play a part, but a very secret, secret part that you can look at in the chart is Eros. Eros is actually, you know, the etymology of it is, it comes from the word erotica. And Eros is tagged to this asteroid in astrology that is signified and synchronized with erotic desires. Now, in the Greek, in the history of the Greeks, right, I'm not going to say that this goes all the way back to Egypt because I don't know, but uh, Eros is named by the Greeks, and this had actually a lot to do with the protection of homosexuality because, you know, it's always been a taboo situation. Um, And Eros helped to allow those parts of ourselves that we can't really reveal, right? Those sexual desires that we can't really feel accepted by um, to have protection over it. And so this is why homosexuality was one of those things. Now, Eros works for heterosexual as well. But the idea behind Eros, when it comes to going back to Greek history, is that it's a secret part of us that we may not always want to share when it comes to our sexual turn-ons, right? When we look at the word erotica, this is like something that truly is um, igniting the depths of our psychology, right? And when we use erotica today, like in um, our modern day world, it's considered a literary or artistic work that deals with subject matter that is stimulating and arousing, but not quite pornographic, right? It doesn't go all the way as porno does. So it's right in that middle space of creativity, um, artistic expression and pornography. So like... Um, I think of the word, I think of a burlesque show versus a full-blown strip club, you know what I'm saying, where there's a lot of erotica in a strip club, so, because there's a lot of it that you, you can't touch when it comes to, you know, in the atmosphere of a strip club, right? So, um, it does work there, but if you think about a burlesque, burlesque show, this is like, um, the true like artistry like so it has artistry it has like this um cheeky kind of idea where you're like peekaboo with your body you know um still very sexual very erotic right so eros comes to us through that form it comes to us through the needs to express and the hidden um turn-ons the hidden arousals that we have within ourselves and um, it works really well in synastry. And I encourage you to, to look up Euros. Um, if you need to know how to look it up, you would go to astro.com. That's the site that I use. Uh, I'm not quite, quite sure how to look it up on any other site. So I'm just going to talk about astro.com. Um, and when you fill out your birth chart information, you click extended chart reading and you scroll down and you'll see that there is a box that you need to fill in. So Eros is 
number 433. So you type in 433 and then click the chart and you'll get your natal chart and you'll get the part where Euro sits in your natal chart. And what's great is that you could sync your partner's chart and you could see where each other's Euros lies, right? Euros in the sign uh, really helps to understand the like the overall uh, character of how Euros likes to play out. Eros in the house is the place where you might find yourself being more aroused than not, right? So Eros in the fourth house is naturally a home, right? In your home, you feel you can explore your sexual, um, you know, deviouses, devices, um, but like maybe Eros in the third house would be maybe at a neighbor's house <laughs> or at the local library or something like that. So um, the placement of euros would be found in the house. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, um, I see people are coming in and out. So um, you can definitely ask if you're a little too shy to ask in a live. That's cool. You can definitely message me and I can give you a little bit of information. I could also do a reading for you and we could talk about it. Um, as an individual and if you want to match your euros up in symmetry okay but what I wanted to speak about today um, and the reason that I'm doing this live is because currently Jupiter is transiting through Sagittarius and is conjunct eros and Sagittarius okay so this is actually um, awakening a lot of sexual desires right because Wherever Jupiter goes, it expands, right? And Euros is kind of something that we don't let be publicly revealed. But when Jupiter comes to Euros, it's more in our consciousness of the things that we kind of like need to feel turned on, you know? And a lot of the times in the current sexual, you know, exploration of the world, we kind of lose you know, that exploration and being in Sagittarius, there is this opportunity to explore and explore with somebody safely, whether that is a marriage partner, a boyfriend, or even, you know, a friend. But there seems to be somebody who has the wisdom in a partnership to help you unlock your arrows, right? And now is a great time in which you can advise somebody else on the things that you need. And Jupiter will help bring you, uh, bring it out for you, you know, because sometimes it's not an easy conversation to have, but there's ways in which we can really like go there right now. And uh, Jupiter is about expansion. It is about fortune. And um, I think that this can tie into the need to uh, tap into fortune in a way that's not just about money and bills, but fortune in life, because there's like this need for us to grow as human beings, right? Spiritual growth, physical growth, financial growth, whatever. There's always this place of us where we need to grow. And Jupiter being a planet of wisdom and growth, conjunct Euros, is almost like uh, giving us an opportunity as a collective to grow more and mature more when it comes to our abilities to speak about sexuality, our individual needs, to open up more about this. Now, there are aspects with Euros where it still might feel suppressed to do that. That would have to do with, um, like, in your natal chart, do you have opposing planets or anything like that with uh, Euros? But currently, there's not a lot of strong um, aspects happening to Jupiter. So it's almost like an open field right now. So Jupiter in Sagittarius conjunct Euros is about exploring um, sexual fantasies, sexual turn-ons through the acts of cultural differences okay so this could be like how do um how do other people in different cultures um explore their um you know uh, 
for play, for, for instance. Um, this could also be just about being more attracted to people from foreign places. And if you've ever been restricted about that, you might find yourself opening up to, you know, looking at somebody who's from a completely eth different ethnic background from you or wanting to hook up maybe with somebody who has a different religious um, perspective than you. These could be things that are um, wanting the sexual desires to grow and expand because sometimes we can get very bored with what we already know. And that's Sagittarius. Sagittarius gets very bored with what it already knows. So Jupiter here expands the exploration and Eros brings in the experiencing of the turn on, right? So being more um, erotic. Now this can also, this because Sagittarius is also about religion, it is about like the place of belief sets and faith, right? This could also mean wanting to do some defiling things like in a church, right? Um, meeting, meet me after Sunday service. And this is also why it's, um, you know, I did want to do this talk on Sunday. It actually worked out well because I didn't think about it, but it works out that Sunday is a typical day of, you know, going to church. And a lot of the times in church, we are faced with this uh, suppression of sexual and erotic desires. It's almost seen as impure, right? Um, but Eros and Jupiter and Sagittarius opens up the exploration of combining the two and and allowing it to be of a spiritual nature, right? A conjunction bring, brings harmony for the whole experience, right? So when we're dealing with conjunctions, it brings out the best of it. So people's perspective can also shift between, you know, combining sexuality and faith and religion. Okay, so I have a comment. So let me take a look here. Taurus says, well, it would depend on where it is in your chart and the aspects because this is happening in her 12th house and she's experiencing remembering sexual abuse trauma in her childhood. Very well said. And, um... Yes, I did mention that if you have any aspects to your euros, euros can bring out maybe the secret, like in the 12th house, it's secrets, right? So the secret sexual desires of others. 12th house also reveals trauma, um, as Tor has said, um, history, like things that have been suppressed secret, suppressed secrets, excuse me. Um, so yeah, in your chart, um, if Euros is aspected in a harsh way, meaning by a square or by an opposition, then you could also be experiencing Euros um, and the way in which it does not benefit you, right? Because it could be the sexual turn-ons or perversions of others. And the 12th house is obviously where we fall victim in a lot of times. Um, so that is important to mention. Um, Tor, do you have euros in Sagittarius in the 12th house? I'm just curious. But currently, um, euros, right, in the current transit, euros is conjunct Jupiter. So euros, as you know, right, or if you don't know, euros, are like the planets and the asteroids, they're constantly moving. So your natal chart is a picture of where everything was when you were born right? But in the current day, we can pick up Euros and Jupiter and see where they are right now. And then we can combine it with where they are right now and where that is placed in your chart. So I also wanted to just go through the signs. Um, I wanted to go through the signs and, um, not the signs, sorry, the house placements so that we could just get a kind of a, we could get a little um, uh, a little more in depth about where Euros conjunct Jupiter right now is in your house. Uh, so wherever you have Sagittarius in your house is where we can experience some of this expansion of 
erotic desires because like I said the house placement is going to be where you find it placed right so this could be where you are wanting to explore yourself when it's you know in life like where in life is it explored right so um let's get to it okay so if you have Sagittarius in the first house, then Euros and Jupiter conjunct each other is basically on your physical body and in your personality. And um, this is about, this is similar to like Euros conjunct the sun in which it's, it's like you are the object of other people's, um, other people's erotic fantasies right now, right? And it's expanding even more with Jupiter. Jupiter can be of wisdom, right? It could be a, a religious guru or a spiritual guru. It could be a um, publishing uh, platform, right? Because Jupiter helps to publish things, you know. So like one of the biggest, um, sorry to go off topic, one of the biggest publishing books that like created a huge rebellion, right? Of the people was the Bible. Right. So the Bible, when it was published and it was able to be not just this one thing that everybody went to. Right. Once it became something that everybody could own and have, it became a huge rebellion and people could free themselves through that publishing. Right. Because they could have and create their own interpretations and their own wisdom. So Jupiter becomes that publishing factor. Right. And um, with the first house, you could be like a sexual guru, right? Or you could be like a spiritual, sexual healer, right? With your physical body. So what your personality and body brings to the world is helping people to unlock and unleash their desires. Because like, like I was saying before, fortune comes with Jupiter. And fortune is not always just money. It's also just sexual health, right? and protection of your sexual expression right people become very like old and crippled and yucky when they feel certain people some people don't when they have a lot of virgo in them they may not but outside of virgo aspects like you can really suppress yourself you can become ill you can lose a lot of your health if that aspect of you is not met right so you could be publishing yourself, like having a publishing deal where you're on a calendar or in a book or something like that where you're sharing your own you know, sexual stories, wisdom, advice, okay? So um, with Jupiter placed, Jupiter and Euros conjunct this um, conjunct in the second house. If this falls in your second house in this transit, meaning that you have Sagittarius, in the second house, uh, this would be where you are probably finding more of your desires coming out when you are making money or where you are making money. So, or like cutting a check for somebody else. So if you're like a boss and you're like cutting checks, there's something here that's really like pulling you towards wanting to kind of, I don't want to say control, but there's like a possession of others with money and that might want to even come out here. And it's like the more money you make, the more that you're turned on by your own self, you know, because that second house is still like what's, what is, what is mine and how it indulges into my own like life, right? So your indulgences might also just be over the top like what you eat how you make your money all of these things are just feeding into you feeling yourself this is like the ultimate i'm feeling myself um placement i would say and um it could be in the place of your work environment it also could be in the place of your home right or where you go to eat right so if you go to a restaurant um, that would also be in the third house, but anything where you get to experience your possessions, right? So making money right now is a huge turn on for anybody, but especially um, in the second house, making the money, right? 
and um, let's see the second house is what we value and it's our morals so where is it in your life that you get to bask in those places right where do you get to stand for yourself when it comes to your values and morals these places that you go to for those things that would be where Jupiter and Eros are combining this could also just be creating a, a, a more intimate experience in your relationship because the second house possesses people as well and so it could definitely be just allowing yourself to be more indulgent with your relationships now the third house is where it's there's certain houses that are easier easier to interpret placements right and the third house is definitely one of those places so the third house is everything that's local in your local environment so like at, like i said before the local uh, library or you know going to a neighbor's house this could definitely be where you are dealing with a person who lives nearby and maybe you're turned on by your local neighbor um this could also be that your neighbor's turned on by you because what I forgot to mention, and I'm sorry that I'm doing it right now, is that Euros has two arrows. So there is the turn on and there's the perversion, which is like a, a um, sorry, there's the super turn on and then there's the repulsiveness, not the perversion, but the repulsion. So sometimes when you are dealing with Euros, you might get, especially when you're conjunct Jupiter, you might get the opposite of repulsion, right? And so the third house could be somebody who is like your neighbor who's repulsed by you. It could be that as well. But because you ha harbor these pure, you know, erotic nature, it still has to do with the eroticism, right? It could be somebody who can like hear you having sex next door or something like that. Right. And either they're turned on or they're not like they they can't stand it anymore, maybe because in their own lives they are not experiencing that kind of fulfillment in their life. Right. So it could be that as well. But it could also just be going to the local park and like, you know, making out and exploring sensuality in the local park. Right. Um, it could be in a learning field. So like in a classroom, you know, going to school. And hopefully, you know, mainly it's like in college, school and up, but like, you know, go, being in a learning space or any sort of place where you're learning your skills or trade. So let's say if you're an apprentice for somebody, an assistant for somebody, if you're learning anything, any place where you're learning, you also might be um, experiencing some, you know, sexual desires arise in those places. Okay. In the fourth house, Euros conjunct Jupiter is going to be tied to just being in the home. Um, you might be able to really feel safe in your home, be more um, yourself, be able to enjoy your body. Um, and maybe you might even express like by art or things that are culturally buy things that are culturally like like having like the karma sutra hanging in your house like a photo of the karma sutra or anything like that in your home Heart, sorry guys excuse me i have some somebody at the door i'm just doing the astrology talk but come in in the fifth house euros is a conjunct jupiter is where we experience joy so this is where we could experience like the abundance of joy and sex, right? With romantic lovers. This is definitely the placement where somebody might want to explore people from foreign places and date around. And um, because the fifth house is where we have like short term love. So maybe they want to date around and they want to have different partners from different regions of the world. Um, <laughs> this could also be where you're more creative and in a place where you create, like, let's say in your painting studio, 
you are creating literature and art that is, um, like I was mentioning before, like burlesque. So like things that express erotica. Um, if you're a writer, maybe you're writing, sh um, fifth house is actually long, long stories. So the fifth house could be like writing novels of erotica where actually I didn't mention this. The third house would be writing short novels or short stories of erotica. And, um, the fifth house is like, is that place where it, it's about like big, it's, it's like big and large expressions of art, right? So maybe you're going to like a really huge, uh, you know, strip club or something like that, or something that is different outside of your sphere. Um, uh, something that could be, maybe it's like a, um, a, sh a sex show that is in another country or by like another culture. It, it, it explores beyond what you already know. That's the whole thing with Jupiter and Euros, right? So it's not going to be your local strip club, but it might be something that's, that's like over the top and outside of your sphere of comfort, right? Or of knowledge of what you think you know, right? So that's, that's that fifth house. Cause fifth house indulges, it's joy, it's pleasures, and it will go there, right? Now, the sixth house is where we come back to what we do every day. And so Euros conjunct Jupiter in the sixth house is like our ties to uh, working. And so this could be, you know, exploring your erotica in the office space. This is definitely where people may... Um, find love affairs in a work environment, right? And it might be like some new person for, from who's like temporary, temporarily there and who is, you know, from a different culture, from a different faith, right? So this is where it, it can be that repulsive again, because it's like, maybe I even like can't stand like where you're from and what you believe. Right. And this could happen in any section or any house placement. But I'm just speaking as it as it comes to me, because certain houses ignite uh, certain things more, if that makes sense. So like the sixth house, like it makes me think of like the sixth and seventh house can deal with enemies. And so and they're more public. Right. So this could be like, I can't stand this person because they have this racist belief and. I deal with them every day. And then you come into a moment where it, you realize that your repulsion is actually something that is like your erotica speaking. And, and you just want to have sex with them to experience it in that moment of pleasure of, of what it's like. Or maybe you're not trying to change them because changing people is more Scorpio and um, Virgo, but you're trying to explore them right? Explore this repulsion, like this idea that this person lives in, this culture that this person lives in that you can't stand. And the way that people explore, one of the ways that we explore each other is through erotica, is through sex, right? Um, this could also be you joining in a more erotic office environment. So it, it might be you're getting a new trade where you are experiencing yourself in a way in which you can show off parts of your body and entice people and you get paid for it. That also would be the second house because I, I, I was a little stuck with the second house. That could also be the second house. So the seventh house, um, Sagittarius is about um, coming together based off of morals and getting married and, and joining in contract based off of beliefs and faith systems. And so this is awesome for a lot of people who might have had difficulty in their marriage. If you have Sagittarius in your seventh house right now, Euros, Euros gives you the opportunity to come together and explore each other's needs, right? Because you're in it for the long haul in the seventh house. And so this is a chance for you to, this is where I would say definitely do your synastry chart and find your roles in your partner's chart and, you know, dedicate, commit yourself to 
a, a short time frame of giving them what they want and, and compromising on your needs and their needs, right? This is what this allows you guys to do. This might also compel a marriage to want to go out and explore together. You know, there's a lot of like erotic stories of like marriage partners who join swing parties and who go to, um, you know, sex, sex parties and have themselves somebody come in and, you know, they can explore someone within the marriage, right? This could be more possibilities with that seventh house. But also because the seventh house is also ignites an enemy and is like open adversaries area, this could be that you are absolutely repulsed by your partner because of their sexual um, needs, right? And secrets, or maybe they are, you know, having an affair. Affairs would be also the 12th house, but they're having, you know, desires for somebody who doesn't look like you, somebody who is from a different culture, a different faith than you, that you can't stand that culture or that faith or something like that. That would be Sagittarius seventh house possibilities there. Eighth house is where Euros pulls the taboo of sexuality, right? So this is where you, and, and it's still about another person. So it's you and another person coming together, but it's even more taboo. It's even more like expansion on the things that are not even normal in any culture, <laughs> right? There And there are, there are sectors of sexual erotica that most humans, you know, would find very odd. You know, one of the things that they used to have these sex shows on HBO and I used to watch when I was like a teenager or whatever, sneak and watch it. And um, they would explore different things. So one of the things I remember are like people dressing up as, um, you know, fuzzy, like, I don't know how to explain it, like fuzzy uh, bears or like stuffed animals. And like they, this is how they got off. The eighth house is explored, not just in that way, but things like that, where it's abnormal to the majority of human beings, right? Because the eighth house is mortality as well. So this is not just a a culture by culture basis, but it's the culture of the human race because we all die. We all live and die, right? So it's that place where we all would kind of be like, mm, that's kind of odd, right? And it's these small sectors of, of sexual um, devices that tend to lead from tr some sort of trauma, but is transformed into fetishes that are... Um, I'm just going to say abnormal for lack of a better word, right? There's one, there was a teacher, a spiritual guru who talks about fetishes. I think it was Till Swan that I was listening to years back. And she talked about the uh, example of a fetish just off of the feet and how this would be like, you know, a common foot fetish. And this would be tied to like, like being a child and like maybe lying on the floor or doing something where you always saw the foot of your, of one of your parents and that transforms into a fetish or maybe somebody, you know, did something to you. Like, I don't know, kicked you around or something. I know it's, it gets really ugly, but then it becomes something that you enjoy doing to other people in a sexual way because it is about when you're dealing with trauma, sometimes the trauma transforms into life as dominant and submissive. And that dominant submissive happens a lot with Scorpio energy, which is ruling the eighth house. Sorry, I'm saying a lot. I'm saying a lot on the eighth house because it, it's one of those houses that have a lot of things, just like the 12th house. It's just a lot of things. Okay. And so this is where that, that happens, where people transform their trauma into something that is of a fetish nature, right? So that's the eighth house. And Euros here brings out the taboo. It brings the, almost the protection of the, this taboo. This is where Euros, the name and the way that the Greeks looked at Euros was back in the day. You know, it, the eighth house is kind of that idea of 
the psyche and the protection of sexuality due to um, this transformative situation or, or something that is not a allowed to be accepted by the world at large, right? And this could have things that, like even Torah was saying, could not be that great for certain people because, um, you know, there are perversions that happen at a certain point, especially when it is um, foundationally based off of trauma. And this is not for everybody, but perversions can occur here and they can expand here because of Jupiter, right? Because this is all about your turn-ons and this is about trauma and this is about filtering trauma into dominance, right? So now it's this whole um, possibility of certain people who might really want to pull that out of themselves, right? On some real Fifty Shades kind of stuff. Um, and Euros gives a, a, almost a sense of protection over them. So that's even scarier in a lot of ways. Um, okay, so now that we've um, gone through the eighth house, which is pretty freaking scary <laughs> placement, in the ninth house, Euros and Jupiter is truly wanting to um, heal the world and explore and learn about themselves, right? So this could be somebody who is maybe even just exploring sexual um, cultures, like learning about sexual cultures, finding what it is that um, going out into the world and looking for the light, like the connection of, of, of erotica and people's needs to come together because sex co brings people together and the, the pull is different for everybody. So wanting to know what that pull is and bringing it forward, like for everyone to see. Um, so this is about bringing that knowledge, but they might also embody it as well. Like embody the, the beauty of being a sexually compelling person, right? Because as they explore, they will take on these things, right? That's what somebody does when they become a teacher, when they are going out into the world, like to look for things, they have to embody at a certain point. So you you are a professor of of sexual um, of eros. You're a professor professor of sexual desires. That's that ninth house, right? So you have sought. You have you're seeking and you're becoming almost at the same time. Um, the tenth house, euros and. Jupiter conjunct, and this is also very much like what I was saying with the sixth house, a career that opens you up to being more sexual in your prestigious business, right? So using it for the sake of creating business or marketing yourself or having a reputation where you can be pulled and seen as this... Uh, this, this foundation, this building, this brand that people know to be of these sexual nature and desire. So this could be like uh, being a business of, you know, like a sex shop and opening up your own sex shop and you're the owner, you know, because the 10th house is the boss. So like you're the owner of this, but it could also be that you are the face of the next magazine of erotica it could also be that because it's your reputation right um so the 10th house also leaves legacy there this could also be where people are exploring what that legacy could be for them because jupiter brings exploration already now conjunct euros it's it's dealing with what is what it is that you're going to leave in and what you're going to leave out because like i said euros is about repulsion this can also happen here in the 10th house. So what is not happening for you that you absolutely are not going to allow to be what you are known for, right? Especially on a level of sensuality, sexuality, um, and desires. This could also be where somebody is defamed because of their sexuality and desires. Uh, the 11th house is Euros conjunct Jupiter. 
Sagittarius energy. This is social status, influencers, lifestyle. Um, and this could be where we are. Um, we live that life. <laughs> like you live that life. Um, you, that swinger party life, you know, where you're, you're known to be at the top of the top of being that person that can woo anybody into their lair and allow them to be seduced by you, right? Allow them to explore you and you them. You could be that person that turns people out and you're, you're in that, you share it with other people. You know, it's like something that you not just are known to do social status, but you influence other people to do it as well. You have a following, you have fans who are just like you, who want to be like you and, and, uh, explore the sexual world. So it, the 11th house is about that following, right? Cause it's a, the influence, but nobody's an influence without the people to influence them. So it becomes you and them, you and everyone else and them supporting you in your acts. And maybe this could even be about freeing people from their repression, right? Freeing people from what they see as taboo or what they don't know about um, foreplay and Kama Sutra and the different sects of sex as an S-E-C-T-S of sex, S-E-X, right? So the different ways in which it can be explored and having that following and bringing them with you, bring them into a lifestyle, into your lifestyle, right? And Jupiter, again, is publishing. Publishing works really well here in the areas of internet. So like being out in the internet, creating products, creating literature, creating um, all of the things that you did create is now put out into the world into things like the internet and social media. All of that happens here in the 11th house. And lastly, the 12th house, Euros conjunct Jupiter, is, uh, this is again one of those houses that have a list of things, right? Overall, the 11th house, the 12th house, excuse me, the 12th house is first the concept of isolation, Right. So this is why a lot of places are seen in the 12th house where you're isolated, like the hospital, right? When you're in the hospital room or when you're in a rehab, right? So this is the first thing that I think of is like sex rehab, right? Going to um, deal with either um, being too overly sexed, right? Jupiter or overcoming sexual trauma, 12th house, right? And maybe a little bit of an integration of both, if we think about it. And um, this is also a place of bed pleasures, right? So spending a lot of time in the bed, not necessarily just having sex, but spending a lot of time exploring maybe yourself. This is definitely an area of masturbation over masturbation, right? With Jupiter and Eros in the 12th house. Uh, this is a place where we look at foreign culture as well. Ninth house is foreign in a, in a lot of ways, but the, the 12th house is truly over large masses of, of the sea, right? Traveling over far distances over the sea. So this could be things like um, really going to a, a country across the world and exploring, you know, sexual partners there. It could definitely be that. It could be um, actually isolating yourself and could be a space where you choose to do everything but have sex. So this could be where you live a more monk lifestyle. Um, and this could that could also be the 11th house, to be honest. But I feel like it's the 12th house because the 11th house would have followers, right? And the 12th house, if you're isolated, you don't have followers like that. You're on your own, right? And so it's like just being um, being uh, strapped into your own four walls and purifying sexual desires, right? Or perversions. That could also be it as well. 
So those are just ideas. They're not the all and end all, but exploring the, the house systems and how Euros conjuncts Jupiter, these are ways in which they can manifest because of the different places that the houses represent. So I hope that you guys got something out of this. And if I ever have time, I'll come back and timestamp this, this one. Um, but it is currently happening right now. So this is something to just bring to your consciousness. Another aspect of astrology that people aren't always aware of. Even I wasn't, you know, a month or two ago. So it gives us even more insight into our chart. But where Euros really, I feel, is effective is in synastry. So if you're interested, um, I have two things for you. <coughs> Excuse me. I have something for free, and that is my astrology course is now rolling out. So I'd love to send you a link to sign up for free. Everybody that I connect with on Facebook, I don't want you to pay for this course. I just want you to sign up, give me feedback, tell me what you want to see more of so that I can continue to improve it. And um, you guys have been supporting me, so I want to always offer that. And so if you would like free sign up to the course, you can just comment below for me and I will message you. But if you would like for me to look at your Eros, and especially if you want me to do a little synastry for you, because that's really what, what I want to do. That's what really gives me excitement is comparing two charts together for this kind of topic. Um, then just go ahead and message me. You can just DM me and we can set that up so that I can do a reading for you and it's very affordable. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys and talk to you guys in my next live. Peace and love.